المجید بل عجیب و انجا اہم منظر منہم فقال القافرون حاضا شیء ان عجیب آئیزا متنا و کننا ترابا ذالک رجع بعید قد علمنا ما تنقص الارض منہم و اندنا کتاب حفیظ بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوِ وَنَقْسِ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ السَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ اِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا اِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ رَبِّ شْرَحَ لِي صَدْرِ وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِ وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةً مِّن The subject I have chosen today for the khutbah is very much related to every fellow human being on this planet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this world in such a way that every one of us goes through some challenges, some difficulties, some hardships. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ That Allah has created human being in such a way there will be a struggle all the time. So the topic is today what is the difference between having some anxiety, some difficulty which is expected versus suffering. That I become patient. I see so many brothers and sisters, you know, in my practice, in my community, wherever I travel, that we pretend like we are normal. But inside of us, we are going through such a difficult time that you cannot see on my face. But when this anxiety, this tension, this difficulty, this hardship, preoccupies your mind, when it affects your sleep, when it affects your good time with your family, when it starts affecting your workplace job, your relationship with your loved ones, that means this anxiety has crossed the border, the line, the gray zone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah, the ayah I read in front of you, that this is how Allah will test every one of us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوِيَ وَنَقْسِ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُزِ وَالْسَمَرَاتِ That we will test you with fear, hunger, loss of wealth, and lives and fruits. My brothers and my sisters, today inshallah, my job is to make us understand that what are the factors which can make this anxiety a suffering, a disease, which can affect our heart, which can affect our body, which can affect us in such a negative way that that disease will last with us until we depart from this dunya. And inshallah, then I will share with you some remedies. You know, the topics I usually choose for khutbah are the topics that I am myself struggling, that I feel like that I need to study more. Because the concepts I am going to discuss with you today, these are not like switch. You can turn on and turn off. These are the concepts that we have to internalize. We have to absorb. We have to work on these concepts when we are in our good days, when we are not going through difficulty. Our mind is like a door. 
that if somebody knocks on the door, all thoughts, they come and they knock on the door of our mind. And it's up to me. I want to open my door or I want to keep it closed. It's like somebody coming at your doorstep and knocking the door with some flowers in his hand. You will happily open that door. But if you see somebody outside who has gun in his hand, you will not open your door. Same way, thoughts, they come and they knock on our mind to open the door. And this is us. We allow them. We entertain them. Anxiety started with a little tiny thing. But we were feeding that anxiety. We were thinking about all the possible scenarios related to that anxiety. We are thinking about all the negative, whatever is possible. Nothing has happened yet. But I am already suffering because I am entertaining that thought, that negative thought, and now it has become really a giant issue and a problem. The second problem is that we overthink and we over focus sometimes to our negative problems. We overthink and we over focus. There is another thing happens. The shaitan, shaitan's job is to put vasvasa. Shaitan job is that if he sees me in a miserable condition, he will feel happy to make me more miserable. So he puts vasvasa about that anxiety, about that negative thought. Negative thought could be a real anxiety, could be about some other person, could be about some situation, could be about some loss in business, or could be some about loss of your loved one. But then shaitan puts vasvasa. Another thing happens, what we call it toxic self-talk. Feeling of guilt, blaming myself. If something wrong happens in my life, I feel like I am the terrible person. I don't worth living in this world. I am the worst person walking on this planet. So we blame ourselves for everything happens. We have to understand the scheme of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he has designed this life. In the scheme of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our role is very limited. Our role is very limited. There are many things in life that you and me, we cannot do anything. This is out of our control. And sometimes we are more worried about things that are not in my control. I can only do so much, but I cannot do more than that. So that you have to understand that there is a limited scope, capacity that Allah has given you and me to play our role, my brothers and my sisters. You know, patience, sabr is the key to handle many situations that we go through of anxiety and tension. And inshallah, I want to share with you some aspects of sabr. First of all, sabr in our definition is a weakness. You know, somehow it's a wrong myth, wrong understanding of patience and sabr. And I'm going to share, I'm going to spend a few minutes about this patience. When Quran and the teaching of Hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu comes, or if you go through the Arabic literature, the meaning of sabr is not weakness, it's strength, steadfastness, courage. It's a sign of tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a sign of belief on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabr is a sign of hope. Sabr actually is a sign that I have the right understanding of the paradigm of this life. That I have understood. And sabr is that I have full belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that my eyes are focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabar means my eyes are focused on the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the sabreen, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the ayah I read, Allazina iza asabatun musibatun qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Ulaika alayhim salawatun mir rabbihim wa rahma. Wa ulaika humul bahdadun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about sabreen and Sayyid Qutub Rahmatullah alayhi has said in his tafsir, he's the Lord of Quran. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving status to Sabir, the status that he has given to his prophets. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Salluna alan nabi, when Allah is sending salawat on his nabi, same salawat Allah is saying here, he sends on a person who is patient, who is Sabir. Salawat means blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's blessing and mercy on a person who is sabir. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse of Quran, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunus biru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa taqullaha la'allakum tuflihun. The person who is a sabir and he excels in his sabr and he is steadfast. And he is God conscious about whom there is a glad tiding in another verse of Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika yujzawnal ghurfata bima sabaru wa yulakkuna fiha tahiyyatun wa salama. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sabreen will grant the highest place in Jannah, highest place in Jannah to sabreen. And they will be greeted with salutation and praise. My brothers and my sisters, this is the reward of a person if he goes through any difficulty in this dunya that he has his whole reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has to go through this suffering regardless. Either with God or without God. Without God, he is going to be miserable. He will actually catch blood pressure. He will catch diabetes. He will hurt his body from inside. But if he is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make him through, go through that hardship without hurting his body. Rather, in return, he will have the greatest reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace of this dunya, and highest place of Jannah of that dunya, my brothers and my sisters. You know, there is a difference when I say a lot of time, you know, we have another wrong myth that if you feel grief, if your heart is feeling grief, and if you are shedding tears, that's a sign of weakness. Wallahi, going through grief is a therapy, is a therapy to come out of that situation. And this is the hadith of, of Prophet Muhammad When he says, when his son died, Ibrahim, and he says, our heart feels grief and our eyes shed tears, but we will not utter anything from our tongue which is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going through grief and shedding tears is really a psychotherapy. That's a part of healing. And that's why when you see Yaqub salam, he lost Yusuf salam, and he was crying so much that he lost his eyesight. But then he says, I will refer my huzun, my gham, my complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a difference complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a difference. <coughs> Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam is complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not complaining about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is very true that whatever you go through, that suffering you can present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
when he was in taif and he was going through that suffering and pain he presented his case to allah subhanahu wa taala that's what exactly hazrat yaqub alaihi salam did that's what exactly hazrat ayub alaihi salam did when he was going through pain and suffering he presented his suffering and pain to allah subhanahu wa taala because that is part of the healing the third thing we can do when we go through any difficulty and hardship do istighfar to allah subhanahu wa taala you can go aya after aya of quran doing istighfar puts you at a station that you will be forgiven will decrease the intensity of your suffering will give you peace will make you feel comfortable istighfar will make you go through your difficulty and hardship with ease and peace my brothers and my sisters and then definitely asking allah subhanahu wa taala for the expansion of your chest that ya allah open my heart rabbish rahli sadri wa yassir li amri when hazrat musa alaihi salam was about to face pharaoh and his chest was getting tight because of that anxiety and tension that he asked allah subhanahu wa taala open my chest so that i can go and face pharaoh my brothers and my sisters and another thing we can do to comfort ourselves is my brothers and my sisters asking dua to allah subhanahu wa taala you know always looking positives you know there is a term you might have heard collateral damage but there is always a collateral beauty as well you know if there was no abu jahal if there was no walid bin mughaira if there were no mushrikeen in makka then you cannot expect bilal there khubab there all these sahaba they got the status because of their opponents sometimes we see obstacle just as a negative sometimes obstacles are to lift us up to give us the courage to bring us more closer to allah subhanahu wa taala to make us shining stars so those obstacles are put on your way by allah subhanahu wa taala to give you the higher status in the life hereafter there is another concept i want to share with you whenever we go through you know pain suffering there is a term you know used process your pain process your suffering you know our myth is that if you just ignore the problem then problem will be solved if you just cover up your problem problem will be solved you know i was listening to one of the lecture and and actually she gave very good analogy that if you have a cheesecake and if you put in your purse that cheesecake you feel like that cheesecake will be gone that cheesecake in a month or two month is going to become a poison is not going to leave you same way most of the time what we do we try to hide our problem we don't want to process our pain we don't want to process our suffering we don't want to process our pain and suffering and difficulty and hardship we go through processing means that you confront your challenge you tackle it you handle it you take action to rectify that because in the beginning it was a little issue if you would have handled it and tackled it you would have solved it but two years three years four years five years and i have seen wallahi families after family they pass on their problems to each other because the one generation before them were not able to handle the problem so we need to process our pain we need to process our suffering so that we can solve it and then we can move on my brothers and my sisters for the shaitan's wasawis there are two things i will suggest because shaitan is our enemy number 1 shaitan iblis and shaitan of our nafs and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us two remedies for that one is 
لا الہ الا اللہ وحدہ لا شریکہ لہو لہو الملک و لہو الحمد وہو علا کل شئی قدیر and second as many times as possibly you could read surah al-nas قُلْ عَوْزْ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْبَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ such a simple this is a dua actually this is a dua surah nas is a dua that you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protection from the wasawis of shaitan you know in the end I want to give you another perspective that how should we handle our difficulties and troubles of this dunya you all we all have to have a faith Nothing happens in this dunya without the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No calamity, no difficulty, no hardship can touch anybody if Allah doesn't want. And another hadith of Prophet ﷺ, if the whole nation, people of all world, they get together to harm you, they cannot harm you. Without the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And other way around is same. If they all get together to benefit you, they cannot benefit you. Without the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know this thing when I say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiyoon. Wallahi, this is not just few words. Actually, this is the true understanding of this life. That we all belong to Allah. And everything I have belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My physical body, my wealth, my health, my family, my friends, everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to Him we all have to return. This inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajaun has the whole understanding of this life that if you go through the difficulty, then you say everything I have. If I lose anything, I know everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given me everything as a amana. And if he takes it back, this is his. It's not mine. The second teaching of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Nothing can happen in this world. Nothing can happen in this world except what Allah wants. The third thing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us Whenever we go through any difficulty and calamity and hardship, we, use, we should say, Qaddar Allah wa ma al. That it is the decree of Allah and He does whatever He wills. Everything happens as a qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And wallahi, ibadat is not just the external worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadat is not just praying and doing psalm and salah and paying zakat. The most important part of ibadah is that internally, internally also I submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If something happens to me, I surrender myself on the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should feel peace inside if I go through any difficulty as a qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us tawfiq. Wallahi, these teachings of Quran and Hadith is for us to make this dunya jannah for us. We ourselves, we choose to make this hell. And as I said, when we go through difficulty, you can go on your own solo flight or you can have this journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala